The Hoka Clifton 9 was one of my daily trainers for 2023 and 2024. Now it reached 600 kilometers and it's time to be retired. But how did it perform? I start talking about the things I like and the things I dislike about the Hoka Clifton 9. I wish to make the disclaimer that I bought these running shoes from my own money from runningshoes.com. I'm going to start with the things that I like. Overall, this is a very comfortable shoe. I think it's one of the most comfortable shoes that I wore in the past year. It's much more comfortable than the Hoka Clifton 8. It feels softer, it feels lighter and it has much more space compared to the previous iteration. The upper is comfortable, it has no hot spots, I experience no rubbing as well, and it has enough cushioning around the heel and the tongue. The toe box, I think, is one of the broadest toe boxes in, I experience in a Hoka. So when I talk about toe boxes and I say broadest, it's the, the, the space from one side to the other. I'm not using the word wide because this is a wide version shoe, and usually in, uh, in, in running in the running world, wide means volume. So if you have wide feet, most people tend, um, at least most companies, will associate wide with higher volume shoes. In fact, I bought this wide version because at the time when I bought it, I used to wear orthotics and I needed much more space. Now I had to actually put more insoles at the bottom of the shoe so that I reduce the volume in the shoe. However, with regards to the toe box, I think this is one of the broadest um, toe boxes in a Hoka, especially when I compared it to the Speedgoat 5 and the Carbon X3 and even the Hoka Clifton 8. The midsole is comfortable, there's plenty of cushioning, it's protective and most likely you will not experience any issue. I did a lot of easy long runs, the longest was around 30 kilometers in the shoe and it did perform beautifully, especially before it reached 450 kilometers, but more on that later on in this video. The shoe feels light, not a tiny shoe, so it's pretty bulky, it has lo loads of cushioning, it's considered a max cushion shoe, yes, they are higher um, cushion shoe, however, um, on foot and in your hand, it feels extremely light, which is a surprise from such a big shoe. The outsole is uh, grippy in most conditions. It might not be the best for wet weather or when there is dew on the streets, but I don't think it should be a decisive factor whether you should get this shoe or not. And um, the price is, uh, is a winner here. At the moment you can find this shoe for I think around 109 euro. I've seen even cheaper around 90 euro if you're lucky with sizing. And uh, for that price, I think you're gonna get a lot of shoe for the money you're gonna pay. The shoe I think is very, very durable. If you see in the close-up videos, you will see that the outsole and the upper are still in uh, great shape. The outsole has rubber coverage in most areas with wear and tear only um, in the heel area the the place where i tend to touch first when i land during my runs now i'm gonna go to the things that i do not like one thing that i was a little bit disappointed was the midsole durability while i can still run in the shoe however i will not take i will not run more than 10 kilometers in the shoe and mostly they will be the recovery runs or easy runs i'm saying this because at around 450 kilometers the midsole of the shoe started um, to feel flat as if there's no more softness there's no more energy return in the shoe a couple of days ago i ran um, 27 kilometers in the shoe it was already around 550 kilometers and to be honest I felt like I was wearing a brick and every step I took 
it felt like as if I was hitting the wall all the time. That means that I will retire this shoe now. However, I would prefer if the midsole lasted at least 600 kilometers, especially when the outsole and the upper are still intact. To conclude, would I recommend this shoe? I, if you don't have a very wide or very broad toe box, I would definitely um, recommend this shoe, especially if you don't mind that the midsole might die at around 450 kilometers. Of course, every runner might have different experience. I weigh 82 kilograms and I'm not the lightest of runners. I tend to stomp much more than run. So that might be the reason why the midsole died so early. For the price of around 100 euro or 110 euro, I think this shoe is a buy. I would definitely buy it. Again, I would consider this shoe as a jack of all trades, but master in none. That means that it's not the best speed shoe. It might not be the softest recovery shoe. However, if you want one shoe to do it all, this might be an option. Of course, there are various options that are out there at different price ranges. However, I think for the price of 100 tank, you cannot go wrong with the shoe. If you have a similar experience like I do, feel free to write it down in the comments below. It's always nice when more than one person says their opinion, at least so that the other viewers can have a much more informed decision when buying a shoe. That was it for today. I hope that you enjoyed this review. If you have any question, questions, do not hesitate to write them down in the comments below. See you in the next one.